Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint just a bunch of hocus pocus. It's the Sanderson sisters in front of a full moon. I'm totally going to show you every step of this painting so you can paint along at home and be hanging this on your wall for your Halloween festivities. But honestly, I mean, it's kind of an all year painting, right? On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi guys. He's going to be during this live event tracking me with cameras live in action, which always creates a bunch of fun shenanigans. So you can see me mixing the paint. You can see all the brush strokes. You can see everything we need to do. I'm going to let you know right off the bat, this is a low two hoot difficulty. So on a scale from one to three, as one being our easiest, three being our most difficult. I'm going to put this at the very beginning of the two hoot, and that's just because there's some splattering and the layering with the moon, and it's a little extra layering on the dresses. But if you've been painting with me for a little bit, you're going to sell through this super easy peasy. <laughs> wow. Like magic. Like magic. But we, a bum. We, we have already got over 250 people in the room, and there's more and more just coming in. Thank you yeah. guys. It was so exciting. Very, lots of people are very happy for this one today. So I, this one has been, I've been on YouTube a couple of years now. Yep. And one of the images that I had been requested and requested and requested and requested and requested has been the Sanderson sisters in Hocus Pocus. I'm going to bring it up here. And there they are. There's the girls. So the thing about this was for me artistically was that um, one, you know, I've got to find my way into a project. Like, I can love a property. Like, I love Stranger Things. But I just haven't found my way into an artistic project about that. Right? So I haven't painted about it, even though I'm totally passionate. Same with Supernatural. just haven't found my way in. So it took me a minute to find my way in to the Sanderson Sisters. But when I did, it was like an explosion. And I think the Monster Maidens this Halloween kicked this off. This is day 12 of 13 days of Halloween day Live. Day 12. I mean... Right now, we've been live for 12 days in a row. We're going to finish this off. Gosh, I hope you're coming back tomorrow for the live pumpkin carve. Mm -hmm. We're going to carve with me, and I'm going to make your sensory fun pumpkin carving activities just a little groovier, a little groovetastic. We're going to Sherpify it. We're going to be like rocking our pumpkins. So I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about showing this to you guys today. Let's look at our materials. All right. All right. So I have an 11 by 14 canvas on here. And of course, if drawing is not your thing, there is a traceable that is at the website. If you check the description below, besides the exact materials that I'm using, so don't hide that from anybody, there is also a link to the full schedule for the 13 days of Halloween. Everything we painted that was Halloween themed before, mm -hmm. so you pretty much could paint almost all 31 days. And of course, on this exact, if you click the girls, it's the traceable for these two, so you can transfer that on. It's okay. All right. Oh, and I have wishes. Oh, yes. All right. So right now we have a really, really, really big wish for just all of Northern California, um, just to be safe, because there's been a lot of fires going on, and we just want everyone to be safe. Um, I have personally for a friend to get some really good test results. Just everybody put a wish into ether that those test results come back super optimal. Yes. Um, healing for Jennifer's eyes. And then we need some extra, guys, we've wished here before, but we need some extra hard wishing here for some, or loving wishing for Amanda's little brush, mm -hmm. right? Because there's been some follow-up surgery. We just want everything to just like them to be at the end of that and hear, you know what? You're all done. It's time to go play, kid. Yeah. That's what we want to hear. So that's what's on there for our wishes over here on our pink colors. I have docks, purple, uh, quinacridone, magenta, mars black, yellow ochre, thalo blue, Cad red light, you could use cad red medium, cad yellow medium, titanium white, and some thalo green. Also, today, specialty wise, I'm going to be using from my Galaxy set my uh, special splatter brush here. And I have my dotting tool for if I need to do particular stars. And if I decide my stars are too light, I can use my splattering tool. And then to do my star splatter, I really, really like fluid paint. So I'm going to be using some fluid paint for that which I will turn upside down now so it will come out. Let's get started. All right. Do you know what I forgot, John? Because mm -hmm. we haven't been here unless I forget something. Mm, I don't see the lipstick out. <sighs> it's not that. It's the little kids' dessert plates, the little melamine I ones. wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, you wouldn't have guessed that. I need that to trace my circle. All over the moon. Yeah. <laughs> forgot. I don't. Okay, I do have a way to make a perfect circle freehand, but it, um, it, it just go in the cupboard. I think somebody picked it up and washed it. 
Don't you just hate it when members of your family who never pick anything up suddenly decide they're going to help clean? It's just the scariest thing ever. So I'm putting out a little phthalo blue and a little marsh black. I'm going to put out another little marsh black. You're just like, I've got too many things to do. And I'm going to put out that one. Yes, that's the one. You found it. All right. <laughs> Basically, I can freehand a circle on the flat because I can rotate things a particular way, but it's kind of a pain to do on a vertical. And so I have it, but I might figure out a way to show that to you guys. And I'm just putting out a little white paint here for the sky. Mm -hmm. Like you do. Like you do. Okay, first thing, I've got this little plate here. Oh. See my little plate? I plate, see your plate. plate. But see, what's happened here is that I can't have adjusted for the darkness. There we go. Okay. So I've got this little plate. Okay. Um, it's just a little dessert plate. I'm going to take this. You can have a slightly bigger plate. You can have a slightly smaller plate. I'm going to take this a little bit from the top because I want the moon centered and up. So you can see there's not much space here. I'm going to take my watercolor little brush around. This is my watercolor pencil, so it'll sort of vanish into the to the ether. Now I've got a nice little moon. Is that the size? Yeah, I guess that's the size. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, that's I, so weird. I was like, it's like it seems small, but it seems small, but it is the size. So, but just something that fills size, up your sky. What size is that? If they if they wanted to know, I don't know because you you okay. can measure it and then tell them if with a ruler. I'll do that. That I've would be it. what I would do. I would measure it. John's going to measure this and tell you guys with a ruler, and I'm going to mix some paint up with a palette knife. Just because that's easier. Sometimes it's nice to mix paint with a brush, and sometimes it's nice to mix it with a palette knife. And the differences between those two times is whether you want something thoroughly mixed or loosely mixed. So when you're trying to thoroughly mix something or specifically mix something, it can be nice to use a palette knife. You can still do this with your brush. So I'm just mixing a one-to-one -one ratio, one part black, one part blue. That's going to make my panes gray for this guy. And I'm going to scrape it. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Put it aside because I'm going to get every little gooey, ooey ounce of paint. Scrape. All right, come on, dude. So that's my little scraping method. I'm also going to make up a bit of a yellow gray with my yellow ochre in my Mars black. It's six and a half inches. Six and a half inches. And, and well, sometime I'll have to show you my, my trick with my pinky and my rotating canvas on how I, if I'm stuck and I got no plate. I have to say we have a special we have a special guest with us today. Who's our special guest? Miss Lindsay has sat down to have a tea break with us today. The hardest working YouTuber. She seriously is. Hi, Miss Lindsay. This is very nice to see you. We got a great crowd Do you like on my here hat? today. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Elizabeth was on about your hat. She was like, "That is one fierce foot hat you have going on." And they, so there's been a lot for your hat. I gotta have a fierce hat. I don't know what to tell you guys. Ooh, guess what I'm gonna start with? What's that? My number eight cat's tongue. I can't imagine. So I'm gonna take my number eight cat. You guys like? Are there are no other brushes? No, not anymore. They're all <laughs> gone. So I'm gonna take my number eight's cat's tongue, and I'm gonna get this just damp, dragging off the extra water, and I'm gonna just load the brush with the pure pigment that I've mixed here, and see how I pull it out and I flip it and well, I load it again. Yeah. Hmm? I'm gonna fix it. You're gonna fix something. What are we fixing? My hat? You have to fix the zoom? Do you need me to push the canvas forward? Perfect. There we go. How's that? Excellent. So I'm just pulling it out. Say so I just take the dark pigment and pull it out. The top half of this is going to be quite dark because mm -hmm. it's nighttime. So I'm going to use value to talk about that. The other thing you can do is you can do a stroke kind of smoothly, you know, if you want to to smooth your sky. That is okay on this particular part of it. You got to dip in water, pull a little more acrylic. And I'm just coming around here and just painting this upper part, this dark, dark color, to about midway, halfway around the moon. Mm -hmm. You can see I've got my strokes going around, coming around here, having a good time. Just Making directionality is what I would say. Mm -hmm. Giving it directionality. Now, as I'm going, I'm not going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to just pull out some white, flip my brush, and pull out some white. See how I just flipped it? Mm -hmm. This is loosely mixed. 
you know, it's mixed on the brush, and a lot of it is going to just mix itself you can, on the canvas. Yeah, it makes that very, that, that nice painterly or mixed on the canvas kind of look. Yes, and that's one way of doing it. Just being like, you know, I'm going to let it all work out on the canvas. I'm going to leave this whole week on the canvas. Um, it was real fun. Last night we actually rewatched Hocus Pocus. Yes. You know, with the kids who had not seen it yet. It, that's, it's that crazy moment with your kids when you realize that they've missed a great movie they really need oh, to see. My. And, you know, <laughs> you're going, going back and remembering Disney writing from the mid-90s. Max so, Dennison. Yes, so And the good. Black Flame Candle. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved, loved, loved... How Sarah Jessica Parker and Bette Mittler oh my, it just rocked their roles. I mean, they just broke out. Actually, all all the, all the witches did really great. And Billy the Zombie was a surprise breakout. Yeah, it was incredibly, incredibly talented actresses. And uh, yeah, Billy the, the Zombie was fantastic because... Who played Billy? I don't know, but Luna... He's really good. That guy needs an academy. <laughs> Luna was sitting on my chest the whole time, and she was so afraid of the zombie that as soon as they were going to cut his mouth open, he was going to eat everybody. <laughs> And then she was like, this movie's okay. I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, it's not that zombie. All right, so I'm getting my brush wet. You can see as I'm going down, I'm not really grabbing more pigment from over here. I just keep adding white to my dirty brush. And I'm going to take this. Even though I'm painting dresses over this, I'm taking my paint all the way to the bottom of the canvas. And a lot of that is, one, because it gives a nice surface for everything to affix to, and it creates depth, and two, because that way you can be loose and flowy as you want to, and you won't have some weird white spot you got to go back and paint later. Putting our little wishes in. Putting our little wishes in. So just yes, getting this all in. The ladies would like to let you know that they are all running amok, amok, amok. Amok, <laughs> amok, 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 amok. Okay. Shades of what life will be like if I ever get off this <laughs> wired sound you're, system. You're, you're tethered. <laughs> Don't go too far, mucking. <laughs> Sadly, some of my most hysterical moments in the studio have not been caught on camera. <laughs> and Well, that's not true. Some of them have. They just haven't made air. <laughs> <laughs> Where I get caught in several things. All right. So if you're very happy with your background the next step you get to do is stars. And so what I'm going to say is there's a bunch of different methods that you can use to create splatter. I've made several videos on splatter and I even have one how to splatter and make stars. So you can check that out if you want to look at the varying ways to do that. But the one I'm going to show you for today is where I take fluid paint. By the way, craft paint will work for this. But I really love this stuff. I highly recommend it. I just get that it's not everybody's budget. So if it's not your budget, craft paint is an option like a craft white paint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this. I know it looks like a toothbrush, but you would never brush your teeth with these. Okay. Ever, so, ever, unless so you had metal they Terminator teeth. They want me to let you know that they see two bunnies kissing in the white paint. <laughs> there is two bunnies kissing in the white paint. <laughs> you guys are the best. That's a whole video I'm going to make. I'll paint two bunnies kissing in the white paint. Okay. <laughs> So when I've loaded this, sometimes I like to smooth and look for any globs, right? These are very, very stiff specialty filaments. These are the Sherpa white filaments. And what that's going to let me do is create a very predictable dispersion of splatter. Um, one of the things that I found very challenging as an artist, um, finding brushes that could predictably make a splatter that I could count on, and then relocating them if something happened to them. So it's really nice to have a product that does this every time, every product, and is replaceable. Yeah. You know, and is very controllable. I'm going to rinse this out and put this to the side. Remember not to let your splatter brush soak. Be <laughs> My towel just went away. Oh. In the water because the bristles go right into the wood. Your hair is looking at me. My hair? It's just got, a, got an eye on me. Every, and time, I. Every, every, every time I look over there, it's, like, it's looking at me. <laughs> Where's my number eight cat's tongue? I'm painting my moon. So I did a warm gray yellow for the moon. That way it would really pop against that blue sky. So I'm going to get my brush wet, take off the extra water. If you need to rinse it out anymore, you can. You just want to get off the extra water. I'm going to load this up with just my 
gray yellow. It's like a yellow gray. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come paint this right side of my moon dark. Because, you know, we're shading things. Shading. The moon is a very round rock. Probably not that round, but appears round from a distance. You know, the earth and the moon have been throwing shade at each other for <laughs> millennia. <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't, Mr. Cooney. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be starting none. There won't be none. They have <laughs> throwing shade. I love shady boots. Shady, shady, shady boots. <laughs> <sighs> There's so much shade in the universe. All right. So when I have that right backside with this dark, uh -huh. I'm going to start doing the same thing I did with the sky, where I'm going to add white to my brush. But I'm just not going to rinse. And I'm going to go wet into wet. This paint is still wet. And I'm going to come back in with my brush. And let these two blend together right on the canvas. This is sort of the basis of blending in acrylic. Hmm. Is this wet into wet. This is a real simple method of it. But that is one type of acrylic blending. And it's the most frustrating type. Because this paint dries real fast. <laughs> it's its superpower. And it's challenge. So I'm going to keep coming forward. I'm going to add a little more white to my brush. All right. And just paint the forward side of the moon. Like you do. Like you do. Like I do. Like you do. Oh. I'm just Blue Eyes was just asking, who's your favorite Sanderson sister? And the chat erupts. And the chat erupts. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's there's you know lots of people like Bet's character Blue. I agree, but I I kind of like the Winnie. The Winnie? Mhm. Mm I just uh I I felt her weird shenanigans <laughs> to be really enjoyable. So you can see I just brushed everything back trying to imply the shape of this. Once I have oh. that in, yep, there it is. right, I can start moonifying. Moonifying? Moonifying. So I'm going to load a little of the dark color and some of the white onto my brush. And I'm going to start breaking up my moon pattern to make craters. You know what would be really good to know hmm. is if in the comments... Like after this video is, you know, go processes through the live yeah. and there's comments, come in and post up, which is your favorite Sanderson sister? Oh, oh I would love to know. Let's it's, it's on. Because, which sister is your favorite? You know, because I can see a time when, you know, you, one might want to come back and look at the subject matter again and it would be good to be informed more like if I was going to do the faces, because that was some discussion like, we didn't have to do faces. Wait, I don't know. Maybe I wanted to do faces. I'm going to brush the backside. I don't, you know, there were other really So epic... you can see that I'm breaking up some raw random patterns here and leaving some open spaces. And the trick would not would be to not make really obvious like circle shapes. Yeah. Now I'm going to load up a lot of white, but not rinse my brush and come on the left hand side and roughly and the reason it's roughly is so that it feels lunar add some of this highlight see how that just creates a lunar effect uh-huh you know you're just creating a little lunar effect you could do a filbert here and get the same sort of soft stroke if you did not have my cat's tongue yeah so it's yeah there, i think it'd be really interesting to come back and revisit because you're not yeah. just with the faces but i mean like you know uh I I really liked when Mary flew off on the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> the vacuum cleaner almost ended up in the I, I It's probably one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> when little kids find all of the broomsticks and Mary is just like, nope, I'm, she's actually probably my favorite character of them. <laughs> I liked Winnie a lot, but Mary was awesome, <laughs> Did you know? Especially when like they found the kids. And like uh, Sarah, Sarah's character freaked out, and then Bet freaked out, and then uh, Mary freaked out, and that had that little scene. I just thought it was great. So this is where my favorite scene was when the the angel blessed her, and she screamed her head <gasps> oh, off. Yes, <laughs> that was the that best was... thing I've ever seen. Bless you. Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just fantastic. And and he goes, they call me master. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. I smelled children. My daughters had That's so right. many questions about the bus, the whole scene, the whole bus scene. They did. They were like, I don't, the bus scene completely yeah. threw, threw my girls. The, bu- the bus, yeah. They're like, I don't get what he's talking about. <laughs> so to do this next part, I'm going to dry. I'm going to let John talk to you about his favorite scenes from the Hocus Pocus movie. And oh. I'm going to give this a dry. Okay. So, gosh, the guys, uh, we had a lot of fun last night watching with all the kids. Uh, so, um, and I think that, uh, I, re- you know, I have to say that after watching Luna watch the movie, Billy has turned into one of my favorite characters now. Uh, just because um, he's just this sort of endearing magical zombie and not uh, uh, the kind of more modern zombies that we have today. So it was very nice. I thought I was just, I, I really liked the movie. Um, actually, uh, I really liked the, you know, uh, just so much of that. Um, but, you know, I what, I what I should be doing is saying thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us because we have over 500 people here. Oh my gosh. 505. Wow. You guys, I, this is really nice. We're all kind of having fun celebrating Sanderson sister stuff today. So that's pretty awesome. I think Cinema would be kind of tripped out by this. So don't forget to post up your paintings because we definitely want to see that. And wow, Cinema, we've got over 500 people here hanging out with us to see this Anderson We got sisters. some Sanderson sister fans. Yeah, clearly. Also, I dropped my blue <gasps> Sorrel tracing paper. So I guess I'm using yellow today. So this is my transfer sheet, and I'm going to put my girls where I want them to be, and I'm going to tape them in place. I dropped it, like, under my easel, the blue one, but I think the yellow might work really good against this blue, so it may be okay. Yeah, we're going to see. We're learning. So this is Cyril transfer paper. Oh, thank you. And it com- I got the sample pack, which comes in color sheets. It's S-A-R-A-L. Oh, we have to. That's right, because we have 500, oh, which you, is more than 300. We don't have. You don't have to dance right this minute. I, I was just. I was just over. Uh, I got my paper. You got paper. You just gonna. I think I can probably. I can give you something to dance for, my And we have over 500 people here to do this, Sanderson sister. So thank you guys for coming. If you're here, you know that when we get 300 people together, we like to get together and dance because. We, Celebrating being together for art is probably one of the coolest things you can possibly do. So if you're there, dance with us. Be a muck a muck a muck and wiggle. A muck a muck a muck a muck a muck. And if you can't get up and dance, then make sure you wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes because you gotta gotta remember to celebrate being here and being alive and being part of all this. So thank you guys for coming and being part of this wonderful art tribe of ours. <laughs> you know. We'll leave we'll leave we'll leave we'll our leave. Our, we'll leave our, our modest bubbles going because they are they're not terribly good bubbles today. I need okay. waiting for my good stuff. I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. So the trick is, is I need enough of this info to be able to transfer it on. I don't need all of my dress info. All of the dress info? I don't need all my dress info. <laughs> you just need some of, of the dress info? Some of my dress info. Look at me being all you're multi-handed. All mul- you're 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 showing some dexterous not really skills. I I um I inherited my awkwardness from my mother. <laughs> Definitely not my dad. My dad is like super elegant and coordinated. <laughs> I mean, like really coordinated. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, well, he does. Okay, so uh, yeah, to kind of put that in perspective. Wow, he does um, endurance motorcycle riding. KTM motorcycle riding in Moab at seventy-eight years old. Yeah, yeah, and he and he does it on the bike. You know, the motorcycles that don't have seats on them; they just stand on them and ride them. Yeah, and then uh, he does paragliding and uh, extreme yeah. skiing. So yeah, elegant, <laughs> very and graceful. Yes. So I'm just tracing over my lines that are under the over the blue paper. And that's going to transfer this blue uh, pigment to my canvas. But what's nice about it, it's removable with just like a, a moist brush. So that's super helpful to me. Uh-huh. 
and then I'm going to trace a little bit of the shape of her hair. I'll tell you when I'm doing this, I'm going to come inside my lines a little bit so I have room to be a little crazy with my brush. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I want to have room to be a little crazy with my brush. I'm going to get the sister here. I love, I got a little wild with the hair. I know that. It happened. I just, her hairstyle fascinated me. <laughs> Did it fascinated me? I think the other thing about that movie is the fall color, which you know we don't really have in Texas unless you go to Lost Maples National Park because somebody lost some maples. <laughs> Jane says your dad. Your dad sounds very fit for over seventy. Um, you have no idea. So fit. No. I mean, like, this guy makes Olympic athletes feel like they're lazy and, you know, look like they're out of shape. I mean, he really is, like... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, he, yeah, it's like he meets guys out on the trail all the time. They take off their helmets and they feel quadruply bad because they just got honed by him on the trail i think also i think a lot of these guys out there love my dad because he shows them that it it's, never ends the summer never ends it's true but he outrides every one of them too <laughs> and it's he's incredibly incredibly talented is what i would say it's just uh especially when it comes to riding and i flying. did make him get a gps so he could be found again if he went missing from one of the locations he rides I'm also not going to worry about the flittery fabric here on my tracing because I've really just got to paint that in. And it'll be different every time. But I just wanted you to know that that was there because sometimes all you have is the tracing mm -hmm. to know what the heck I meant when I did this. Well, he agreed to get a GPS phone. He did. Because his the, the warranty on his BMW motorcycle <laughs> said they would come get him anywhere he got stuck. He decided to go to the furthest point that you can ride out in Alaska and get stuck. Which he did, and they came and got him. <laughs> By the way, that's not a cheap free service. <laughs> no. Turns out that cost you. <laughs> Charged. He didn't mind because he, he, he was pretty He's got awesome. like bear mace because he needs it uh, and his little electric fence for he, camping. My he, dad is a, he's a trip. He's awesome. Total trip. Okay. <laughs> He has a YouTube channel, too. You can watch him ski down the hill. I, think, I don't um, know if I would call it that. Hmm? <laughs> I don't think he does, actually. He does. Does he? He has a YouTube channel, and he has a little camera attached to his head, and you can just watch him ski around places or motorcycle around places. The camera goes wing-a-ding, wing-a-ding, wing-a-ding. Haven't you seen this? No. I have not. Yeah, I keep telling him, let me retitle and tag your videos. <laughs> I think if people could find you, they'd watch. I didn't know. <laughs> He's like, no. All right, so I'm going to start painting in. My girls, and how I'm going to do this is I'm going to paint the furthest forward first. So we're going to paint her in first. Anywhere that you have um, blue that you didn't mean to get it or transfer that you didn't mean to get it, you should be able to come back with a slightly moist brush and just rub it away. Uh -huh. Rub it away. So away, so away. Gonna get around brush. This yeah. is my number four round. I'm gonna pull that out. And I'm gonna also pull out some burnt sienna. Cause this sienna has been burned. Sorry. I, I like that they used the singing magic throughout the show. I liked that too. I thought that was really cool. I mean, are they slithering? Yes. But they're the coolest Slytherins anybody ever saw. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's a lot of questions that you know, a lot of people would like to know if you would do uh, do do more stuff from other films like uh, Harry Potter and Practical Magic. I think this is just getting people excited okay. about. I am so crazy for Practical Magic. That is like one of my go-to sad day movies with pot butter popcorn. Like when it's like real raw and I'm feeling all sad. Nobody loves me and everybody's mean. It's a Practical Magic day, man. That's yeah. happening. That is happily happening. Putting out some of my other colors so I can paint her in. I love everything about Golden but the caps. And I'm not throwing shade because, you know, I obviously don't put them on correctly. <laughs> Taping my paint. So I'm just putting out some colors. 
so that I can do some things. I'm sure I'll be putting them back out again as you go. You tend to put them back out. Da -da 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 -da. This should end up being my full palette. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, it can be a good idea to miss these two black back plops because they make very nice shading. So you don't want that. Well, that was too much. But you don't want them to dry out, right? Because they make a really nice shading for the rest of your painting. So that's some paint economy there. Now I'm going to get my number four brush. I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to load it with a little of my burnt sienna. But look, I'm going to tone it with my sky color. Shade it, really. I'm shading it with my sky color. So see how that just makes it even more burnt? This cookie was not a burnt enough cookie. I'm going to come up at the base of the neck. And my trick with her hair is I first start creating the curls coming in from the center part. So she's got her center part in her head, right? And then I'm going to just make sure I brush the hair directionality away from that. And then as I come to the peaks, I like to just use the brush to imply these really whimsical little curls. See how we're doing? Yeah. Just little whimsical curls. It's a fun thing to do. And it's just about my brush being on the tip and allowing the different filaments to finish out the stroke for me. This gets really poppy when I put the red on it. You just do the same on both sides. And you don't have to, there's no really right, wrong stroke. This is just about implying the direction of her hair in the overall shape. She had a really unusual hair shape. So making sure that her curls. And I don't just do little circles like this. That's not what I'm doing. I'm flicking out and allowing it to finish. Otherwise, I'll end up with sort of a sheep cloud, mm. which I might not like. I'm just push this along, coating it up, and making sure my brush directionality is paid attention to. Now, while this is all like this, what I can do is I can come and get a little green into this brown, and I'm going to deepen this green a lot. To make sure that my green pops with its highlight color, I have to do it deep first. So on this skirt, I'm going to take this pretty far down, even a little bit past the line of her purple. And that way, when I flow her pink over, it's beautifully layered. All right, so we sort of encroach on each other's skirt lines a little bit, see? Mm -hmm. With our green. And then as we layer, it'll pull it forward and make it nice. What do we got going on in Ted? Oh, man. They're so funny, this crew. Yeah, there's... <laughs> they really are. These guys have been talking about all of the different scenes and things that they liked from the movie, and also what uh, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of excitement about next year. There being 31 days of, uh, <laughs> of art, and I'm just you know so you I'm know, taking guys, that in. The core of you have been so super supportive, <laughs> but a minority have been really struggling through this. Y'all don't know. I get messages <laughs> where they're like, "Is this is this going on longer?" How long is this? Is this 13? It's just 13, right? Just 13. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's there's definitely some interest. There's, you know, because I mean, like, it's it's great. There's some some of my favorites are coming up as suggestions too. Oh, like what? Like Beetlejuice. Oh yeah, we gotta do Beetlejuice. So you know, that's you know, there's I, I like all the classic monster men. Yeah, all the classic monsters. You know, headless horsemen, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman. mummy, werewolf. Yeah, it's just. See, Monster Squad was a great movie, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I loved Monster Squad. And I, you know, I've always been inspired to do something along those lines with kids because I thought that that was such a, a funny, interesting take on, you know, bravery and kids and I don't know. All that stuff? Yeah. All that jazz. All that stuff. All that jazz. And then come around. So one of the things I did is I definitely liked to define the shoulders and it was pointed out to me this sort of like stiff, like I can't deal with these girls positioning <laughs> <laughs> that have going on. And some of it is also that I just wanted to make sure that more people had a chance to paint this because so many people are passionate about the property. 
right? They're so passionate about Hocus Pocus. There should be more Hocus Pocus at Disneyland for the fandom it has. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what? I think it has a really big fandom that is just, it's, it, it, you know, but it, I just don't think as many people uh, are, are, are as aware of, you know, because it's, it's. I'm going to get my dark color I use for the sky and just make sure that I've got a shadow sort of implied right here, even though the paint is wet. Just making sure that there's some. It's sort of, some you know, depth. it's a grown up, you know, character set that you you know you enjoy you know like this is these are definitely characters that you enjoy more as you have a you know uh a wiser perspective on <laughs> things. a wiser perspective on kids i'm gonna rinse this all the way out so you know and let's rock this girl's hair so i'm gonna take just a smidge of my yellow and my cad red light and i like it loosely mixed mm -hmm. so that she has some tonality in this fabulously red hair and I'm going to come on the tip of my brush and I'm going to create little curls where I follow these little lines. Oh, yeah. See? And the dark color underneath helps bring some depth to this process. Oh, yeah. So that's how we get that. But she's got her shocking red hair. And so as we're pulling that up, it's looking pretty darn good. Yeah. Pretty darn good. So if this is a stiff brush and it's around and it has a good point that does help me. You know, sometimes you guys are like, it's so easy for you. And that besides like a ton of years painting, mm -hmm. there is the tools do help. But again, somebody could rock this with a toothpick. There's that guy that paints with a toothpick on a grain of rice. So don't feel limited by life. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to be that guy. I'm just saying <laughs> it's a thing. So you can see as we're going, we just use the yellow and the red to create little fields of curls because her hair's curly. She so got curly hairs. Yeah. And you ever notice that women who have like gorgeous, like curly hair always want to straighten and girls with straight hair always try to curl it. <laughs> What's with us? Alright. So I'm just going like this. And Twix says no. Twix says someone. Probably to here. a squirrel. Or cat. Or someone <laughs> at the front door. There's a front door? There's it could be a front door. No. Why are people at the front door? I don't want to buy none. I do not need that magazine. <gasps> Alright. So I'm just coming here. We, we have this here where somebody comes by with magazine subscriptions. You're like, do you still have those? <laughs> I'm on the internet. Did you know I'm on the internet? <laughs> if, 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 yeah, it's like <laughs> someone hasn't notified you that this is obsolete. Sometimes I also like worry for those kids too. I'm like, does your mom know where you are? <laughs> Blink three times if you're in danger. <laughs> they can't see you. <laughs> I'm just saying, what's going on? It's a southern thing. I don't know if you guys have that where you are. Yeah. So I'm just trying to make sure that this is loosely mixed so that the different colors of paint help give me some highlights and some personality to her hair, right? Let me just be fun with it. So I feel like that's very playful. And so I'm going to rinse out my brush. It is. Isn't it playful? It looks very nice. It's playful. Now, I'm going to come get some yellow ochre. And on her collar, I'm going to tip the edge of it with just some yellow ochre. Yeah. Because she had some gold and her chocolates. Gold and purple and green in her costume. So it's trying to make sure that we get all those colors. So I'm just pulling this down. And then I'll shade other colors back up into it. Look fabulous. Yeah. Now I'm going to get into my number four cat's tongue. Because I'm dangerous like that. Dangerous. So I got my number four cat's tongue. It's looking awesome. It's ready to paint. It's ready to do its deal. I'm going to get it wet. Drag off the extra water. And watch that brush go amok, 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 And I'm going to give my painting kitty kisses with my cat's tongue. 
All right, so I'm just loading a loose mix of my cad yellow and my uh, phthalo green on. And I'm going to come to my back and follow my bodice line. And see how it's a little streaky? And I'm letting the dark color underneath show through. All right, get a little yellow. Mix, 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 but it's loosely mixed. Just all goopy on the end of the brush. Bring this down because we want this dress to be green. She's wearing a green dress. See? Mm -hmm. And it can be any green. You're just going to want to make sure that you have certain colors on her for it to feel really, really, really good. I can't wait to see all the Hocus Pocus paintings. Oh my gosh. I so I've just so grabbed pure looking green. Looking forward there. to that. Are you excited? Yeah. It's been, it, seeing everybody's 13 days of Halloween and so many are painting all 13 has been super exciting. And just so you know, more than anything, that guarantees you getting to do it next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We've had so many people come and hang out with us and do this. It's been, I mean, they, this has been one of the most rewarding live I event Game runs. Weeks yeah. Ever. This has been really great. And thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. I just can't say that enough. It's so awesome to have all y'all here with us. So I like to just make sure that my sleeves are a slightly different color than my bodice. So that they show. See? Mm -hmm. And I'm leaving my shadow color right there. Shadow color. The shadow color. Shadow color. So I'm just painting around her nice little shoulders. And I'm just pulling it down. And then I'll go back into my shading color and just make sure that's dark enough to really see. You can even, I like to come right here, just make sure that the neck is a little bit there. And you can even shade at the waist a little bit. Not that you have to. But it gives it, see that little depth? Mm hmm Little depth. A little depth never hurt anybody. A little depth never hurt anybody. Now, it can be fun to grab a little yellow just at the tip and come on the collar. There's something a little fun. And then I like to get a little green and yellow and have it be quite bright. And then I add a little white to it. And then I'm just going to come along and outline just these outer edges. So here we're just coming along the outer waist. Yeah. Right. Then you can add just a few little streaks, not too much, don't get too heavy with this. A little at the shoulder. Just like to create a little shading so we can see stuff. A little yellow, a little green with a bright green. Okay. Just creating, that's what I mean by like there's a little bit of depth in the dress. Yeah, oh yeah, there's definitely depth in the dress. Now, here's another little trick you can do you can take a little white. And a little purple. Because she had some purple in her dress, I didn't want to, and I'm not able to show that because it's at the front. I added just a few purple streaks. Oh, yeah. I didn't catch that until I saw you put it in there. Just because I thought it would help. Let me get my detail brush. My detail brush. I'm going to get some yellow on it. I'm going to make a little filigree. Oh, yeah. Just a little filigree. Just a little something on the back to say, hey, this is a fancy dress. She's a fancy lady. All right. So when you're happy with that, you can move on to your next sister which is the sister that's next closest to us or the middle sister. Mm. So we're painting them oldest, middle, youngest. So you can do Mary next. Mm-hmm.
So right, Mary is the middle one, right? I think so. Yes. Yeah, and then Sarah is because Sarah was played by Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah, and that's the she's the youngest, right? Oh, that's right. Yes, I got those mixed up. Sarah, yeah, Sarah's the youngest, which yeah. is the the blonde, and Mary. Hook John up. He's back there alone. <laughs> I'm right. I think though that's right. Yeah, I think you're right. But you know what? We're on the internet, and the internet will always tell us everything. The you intertubes need to know. will tell me. So I'm mixing my quinacridone and my purple together, more to the purple than to the quin. And I'm going to paint the first part of her hair. And I follow the swirl. So see, I've got this little swirl. Mm -hmm. Even in the brush stroke, even in this plane, I'm putting in the swirls so that as it comes up, right? The brush stroke implies the shape. I'm going to trim in and try to make this as whimsical as I can. Okay, so I just pulled I pulled up the Wikipedia. Shh. I wanted Did to make you? sure I wanted to make no, sure I was No, that's cheating. Right. No one is allowed to Google anything. I wanted to make sure I wasn't saying it wrong. So, Bet played Winfred, Winnie. Winnie. Right? The leader of the Sanderson sister and the oldest. Uh Kathy played Mary, the middle sister, and Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker played Sarah, the youngest sister. Oop, I'm reading and not switching. There you go. All right. So I guess my fave is Sarah then. And I said Winnie, I think is what happened. Because I, I liked her hanging from the gate. I liked her little weird freakouts. I also oh, yeah. felt like that she was maybe running off script. I wasn't really even sure that she was supposed to be doing any of the stuff she was doing. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, like she was trying to make a name for herself back in the background, being even extra more squealy. Yeah, like the scene where where uh, Mary found the little girl for the first time, and and Sarah was just freaking out. I thought that was hilarious. Yes, but you have to wonder: was she supposed to be that tripped out? You, you know, I think it, there's some magic when you get talented actors or actresses together. And I think that those three just made some magic. I forgot to explain some painting things we while we were talking. talking. All right. Okay. So one of the things that I just did and forgot to explain is I took a little of my quinacridone over to my yellow <laughs> ochre and I mixed them together to make this sort of soft peach. And then I came over and added white until I got a very, very light skin tone color. And that's where that skin tone came from. And while I have it out... Besides putting it under her hair, I'm going to come oh. put a little bit back at Sarah's neck. Okay. Even though we're going to paint over it. Just we've mixed it. Why have to mix it again? It's the only two places we have to do it. It's a small touch. and But it's important because if your neck has no skin, people will be like, what's going on? I'm going to mix my quinacridone red and my cad red light. This is one of my very favorite weird little color mixes that you can do. And it does some cool things. And it makes some pretty cool colors. And I love sharing it with you. I do. And I'm going to paint inside her bodice. Now, I've done a lot of fairs, so you might notice that I've <laughs> incorporated some of those feelings into this. Huh. She's correctly cinched. <laughs> Right down to where it's bending. <laughs> so, you know, things you do when you have some experience. Isn't this just like the crazy, most psycho bright color? I love this, the, the way that this painting was set up. This is great. I love all the colors. I love where the girls are. The, you know, it very much, uh, you know, spoke to, um, you know, the, the feeling of the movie. And, you know, uh, my mom had, you know, three other sisters and so you know they they very much had a lot of fun you know with with this movie i know so lots of sisters do his, his mom and her sisters are are the sandersons <laughs> like seriously <laughs> it's not even a joke right out to when they push sarah into the street i think i've seen those girls do that yeah. Don't tell his mom I said yeah. that, De though. Debbie, and, yeah, yeah, Debbie yes. gets pissed out by Sherry and my mom. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. I'm rooting for you, Debbie. I, Debbie. Debbie paints with us, too. She does. So, and she does poetry, and she's super artistic. Yeah. Debbie, I'm rooting for you, girl. Hold on. Okay. So, wow, I just kicked it off, didn't I, over the holidays? 
Oh goodness! All right, that's, that's, you have but, to call your mom later. Okay, that's so okay. <laughs> they, 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 I, I, they, they cause enough spillover drama this way. Some can go that way. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna take my <laughs> cast off, <laughs> and I'm gonna paint with it. I'm gonna get in my cat yellow <laughs> and a little of my cad red, and it's gonna make a very bright orange. And I'm going to come from the bottom of the skirt. And this is very loosely mixed. And I'm going to come over her skirt and sweep down and layer. See how we're layering? We needed some layers and now we have them. If your phone rings, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> But we're she's only a, telling the work. truth. She's we're at not. work, but I don't know where Debbie and Sherry are. Yeah. yeah they, we got to get a bell on them. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, my wedding. Goodness gracious. Well, I guess it was our wedding. Mm. Our wedding was intense. <laughs> so, anywho. Family. Family. I'm going to keep this orange. While you, I'm still you, alive and nobody's murdered me, and I'm going to keep <laughs> brushing it down in nice flowing strokes. Can you see how I'm flowing the fabric? Uh-huh. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put out more paint while I manage my panic attack and imagine my imminent doom <laughs> that I'm clearly spiraling towards. <laughs> now, this is a weird place, too, just to not waste paint. I will also get into my yellow ochre, just so you guys know. Mm-hmm. Because it's a perfectly fine color with the red in the skirt. And sometimes it's nice to just know that you're using everything on your palette. But you don't have to. You can just do cad red and cad yellow. I just, in the first one, did both because I was like, I don't want to waste the paint. And this is a lot of painting this flowing skirt. You know? A lot of it. A lot of skirt. Yeah. A lot of skirt, man. Come here and come here. Coming along. And it's fun and it's colorful. And again, by loosely mixing the paint and allowing the brush stroke to also imply the direction of something, I'm going to do a weird flip, John. Okay. I'm going to flip this way so I can keep brushing. I like to, um, I move my canvas so I'm working to my comfort zone. Mm. That is good for my back. It's good for my neck. Um, don't position yourself to your canvas. Position your canvas to you. It's probably one of the things that causes more injuries in relationship to painting is people position themselves around their canvas. They hunch over it. They get awkwardly to the side of it they do everything but rotate it or move it closer or tilt it up or just make it more comfortable for you so big strategy is make sure that you're not repositioning yourself to your canvas but your canvas is repositioning to you mm -hmm. okay off soapbox <laughs> that's an important soapbox though straight up that's like that's a thing a girl gotta know it's a thing that a girl gotta know gotta know so I'm just making sure this is beautiful flow. That's its first layer. I'll come back with some more of this little crazy burgundy, you know. But you can see that we've got this nice skirt flowing now. Yeah. I'm going to put this aside for a second. For a second now. And I'm going to get my number four cat's tongue and come and just get some orange. Right? Just even your qu quin red and your yellow. It's just you just want some orange. And I'm going to come get her sleeves in. And she's poet sleeves, so I worked really hard to get all the little fabric creases into my little poet sleeves. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of the weirdness around those. Poet sleeves. So just brush stroking. As the fabric's coming underneath the poet sleeve, I brush stroke in this curl up. See, I'm curling up. Mm-hmm. And then when it's from the top, I'm curling down. And that'll help me later when I'm putting in my highlights, trying to say the fabric is all curled and... Poofy. Poofy. Doing the same at this little sleeve. Poofy sleeves. Right, and then I'll come make another little poof. And you can just see my brush stroke, the directionality talks about the poof. 
The sleeves have many layers. So just get your first layer on. I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to come over here. I got my little Quinn, my little purple. I'm going to get some white and a little more white. A little more white. And a little more white. Then get yelled at for singing. Okay, so. <laughs> not on this painting. Not on this painting. He's this is a singity painting. All right, so I'm going to come around in a little swirl. Swirl it. And as I come up her curl, I like to sort of brush stroke as if this is twisted, because her hair was twisted. And then I'm going to get a little more purple on my brush. And I'm going to give her some wispies at the back of her head. See her little wispies? Mm -hmm. She has little hair wispies. You may not like your wispies. I like my wispies. Wispies are not for everybody. I just feel like hair ought to have little wispies. And then I come back with my little detail brush. These. My little detail. I get some just purple. And you can see I thinned it and I load it up on the tip. And then I just so you make little curlies. If you need another highlight with the purple, go ahead and grab some more white. If you need another lighter one. It's okay to have a couple in the hair. Whatever you feel gets it highlighted. See? See? Second layer to the bodice now. Back into my Quinn and my Cad. Mm -hmm. Let me get some more white. And you can really see some of the color when I add a highlight to it. It's just a really gorgeous color. I come on the back and add a couple highlights. I'm going to put out some more, I guess I've got some nice quinacridone left. I'm going to get some just quinacridone on my brush. And here at the front, I'm going to add a little shadow. We're just creating a little shadow across the waist. So I've got this little highlight here, just in there, a little shadow at the waist, and it's a little highlighted at the back. And you'll notice that I'm very, very, like, I'm blending all this in, but I'm rough with my brush stroke, and it gives it that fabric-y feel, mm -hmm. right? If it's getting to be a thing, you can just get a little, get into your mix here, and you can just be like, stroke, stroke, three strokes, and a couple of strokes. So don't feel like you're stuck. Now I'm going to put out a little more CAD, and a little more Quinn, just a smidge more CAD and some more Quinn. And I'm going to do my finishing details on Mary. Okay, so finishing details. First finishing detail. I'm going to get some just CAD because mm -hmm. it's a powerful color. I'm going to come under the sleeve And on the back of the sleeve, making just a couple fabric strokes. It's powerful stuff. Powerful, powerful stuff. And then I'm going to get my red and a lot of yellow, make a light color. I'm going to get some white into it. So I have this light highlighter. I'm going to come on the top of the sleeve. And I'm going to highlight the fabric shape. See? Just a little bit of the fabric shape highlighted. While this is all having a little rest, we're going to get a little of our quinacridone and our red. And definitely come here and add some streaks, get into your yellow, All right, down the skirt so it has some nice depth. Because you just want the skirt to feel well colored. Does that make sense? Yeah. A little more 
quinacridone, not quinacridone, not cad, and I'm just making sure that my skirt is well finished and well covered. Just flowing it down because she's going to be mixing my cad light and my cad yellow. You know. Putting a little highlight there at the top and making sure those brush strokes just go down. This is a number eight cat's tongue, but you could use a round. You use a bright. We're just making sure that things are thought of. A couple of yellow streaks. Flow, flow, flow. Rinsing that out. And one of the nice things is to come in little quinacridone purple. Come under the hair and I like to highlight the bodice. Give it a little shadow. Give it a little outline. Underneath here. See how it finishes out? Yeah. And a couple little ruching <laughs> or gathering shadows coming down in the purple. And here's something I didn't do, but I thought would have been nice if I'd had a little white in my purple for that. I thought that would have looked a little better. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just a little bit. Grab some Quinn. Just want to make sure her, her little line from her skirt her bodice looks good. So I think she's looking pretty fantastic. Rinsing out. Let me get my last clean water. <laughs> my last clean water. And I'm going to start painting in just at Jenner, uh, Sarah right after I have a sip. How are we doing? So you can see why I was like this is too. It takes a minute. There's some layers. There's some work. But it, none of it's particularly overwhelming. Does that make this, sense? Totally. And there, there are so many people here. There are over, we got, we just, you know, we got over 520 people, 530 people here who are all hanging out, loving painting this with you. So thank you for doing this. They all just wanted to pass along. This has been, this has been a big, big deal for lots of folks. So I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this. And I'm so glad you like this design. And I'm not, we may visit the, the uh, Sanderson sisters again. And, and Chad so, is just so hopping today. So is it hopping? Yeah. So thank Chad you guys hopping. for coming and hanging out and, and being a muck with us. <laughs> it's just that's his takeaway. <laughs> what, what John's takeaway is a muck. I, 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 it's just the best. It should be everyone's takeaway. <laughs> just another beautiful morning. Oh no. Anyhow, <laughs> I've just mixed white and quinacridone, and I'm going to make Sarah's. Uh, undershirt her chemise and that's a weirdly technical term of me to use and so I'm just painting that all around here just paint the quinacridone and white which you can see makes it quite bright yep tucking her arm here I might have had her twirling, but I just felt for everybody about the hand issue. Oh, yeah. Everybody would be like, oh, no, hands. So I thought we did hands on Morticia, and that was just enough hand stress <laughs> for the season. <laughs> enough hand stress for the whole season. You may find if you're <laughs> painting a less expensive paint, things take a couple coats, and don't be freaked out by that. Just let it dry. Do a second coat, third coat. It's funny. The... The algorithm, the great deep learning artificial intelligence, <sighs> has uh, determined that amok, amok, amok is uh, auto censoring. So we have to approve all of them as they go through. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> really? Yep. Do you know we could have, uh, like, if it catches this on the, um, it's weird. It'll let horrific stuff go through in the auto captioning, but sometimes it'll, like, grab stuff like amok. Amok, amok, amok. Yeah, it's super bizarre. I don't even know what to think about it. I'm going to not rinse my brush. I'm just going to go right into the purple. Right into the purple. Might even grab a little more of my Quinn. And let's come right under here. 
and her top kind of goes at a little A angle, asymmetrical angle, and right across. Just let that have a little dry. See, and I didn't rinse my brush, so it gives it some dimensionality. Yep. All right, I'm going to rinse out for a second, though. Because if I put my flirty bits in now. Yep. The, the, the little. The little pinky flirty bits. Yep. Best time to do it right now. So I'm going to just grab my pink and my white. I've got my number four. Because I can clean it up. Like, if I come in now, I can paint it super loose and not worry about the right edge and then clean up the right edge with my brush in a minute. Need to ask one of my favorite color, favorite questions. What? Where can I find out where there's more information about the Art Sherpa? <gasps> and it's theartsherpa.com. <laughs> we have calendar out there and there's chat and there's forums and there's like, uh, Lisa's been doing a fantastic job of creating the collections pages where you can find out like uh, the art Sherpa. Which is not monetary collections. No, 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 no. no they're like <laughs> collections of like girls or collections of uh, the boats or, or like the, we have this, this Halloween collection, um, which is the art Sherpa.com forward slash uh, Sherpa Halloween. And it's in the description. Yeah, There's there, a link in the description. Your curated collections. So I'm just adding white to my pink and I'm just creating, because remember she, her skirts were a little bit torn. And I'm just creating this little flirty blowing bit and you can even get a little purple on there and add some purple torn to this little flirty bit. Flirty bits are good bits. Oh, so nice. Rinsing that out now that I have that layered there. And I'm going to get a little of my purple and some pink and some white. All loosely mixed. Oh. Loosely mixed. Come across the waist. And I'm going to blow back a layer of skirt by brush stroke. See how it's loosely mixed and I'm blowing it back? Yeah. Fun stuff. If I do say so myself. Just blowing that back. I like to get things and then grabbing a little white. So I'll blow it back. And then I think it's also nice to start to take it forward. But to take it all the way forward, I'm going to have to paint in more skirt. Mm -hmm. So this is layer one of the top skirt. Ready layer one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's so deep in the dork forest. Yeah, like three people went, ooh. Yeah. And that every, everyone else there went, huh. What are they ever talking Boy, about? You cross sci-fi with fabric with <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah, man. just wow. All right. So I'm sitting here. I'm just painting along. There we go. Nice clean edge. Now I've got to pull the skirt forward. And the skirt forward is no paint. It's just purple and some white. So come under here. And let's, and I might even switch to my eights cat tongue so I can do short work of this. I'm going to turn this over to its side. Yeah. Get my number eights cat's tongue. I grab my purple and some white. And I'm going to go ahead and, because it's loosely mixed, just stroke that out. And it can also be a little bit flirty. See how I'm making it sort of flirty? and wispy and blowy. Yes. Because she's flirty and wispy and blowy. Flirty and wispy and blowy. Here we go. Yeah. I'm going to go this other way. And I'm going to put out some more paint. Like you do. Or and like the deep you purple. Do, like I do, like you do. John isn't doing it. I'm not. I'm pushing buttons. John isn't doing it. Now, the uh there there are interestingly enough, the there are a couple of technical questions. Oh, can, I love technical can, questions. Can you explain the difference between cat's tongue and filbert? 
So, all right, here, here's what the thing is. Uh, filbert in French does mean cat's tongue. And the original filberts were brights that were worn down into a round shape. Uh, let's see if I can show oh, this. These two might actually be a better way of showing it. So these are. Oh, hold on. So this is a filbert and it's rounded. This, however, um, when I worked with my brush maker, there's a brush that oil painters have that watercolor artists have called um, a pointed overall, a cat's tongue. And it's like a filbert, but it comes to a point and it has a slightly more designed edge on the side. So it gives you five strokes in one brush. This just extra little point right here. And there just wasn't that in acrylic, which was making me crazy. And so we did two. We did a number eight and a number four, and I have loved them. Yes. And that's, but that's why you hear the difference between us talking about those. They were, and, and they were just like, oh, what's the difference between those words? Good and, question. Yeah. Good question. And look, it threw off, like, a lot of the vendors that were selling it online, it threw them off because they kept calling them filberts. And we're like, nope, not a filbert. Like a filbert. Filbert could be its friend. There could be a filbert convention, but it's not a filbert. <laughs> So I'm just making this darker back here, and again, still keeping the stroke to show the direction. See? And then once I have that really worked out, I can come back and add layers to make it fabulosity. Yes. And fabulosity is super important. Like, I want a little more pink in my little tendrils. I just take my white and pink and come back here and pink it up. So just don't feel like you can't change things as you're going. Now while I'm here, I need to put out just a smidge more yellow ochre, just a smidge, because I'm going to tone it with that moon color I made earlier, and then I'm going to build up her blonde hair, and then I'm going to finish out her dress, and we will be there. Oh yeah work like getting there. So I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and I'm going to take my ochre and mix it into my moon color and that just grays it or deepens it. I have a bunch of quests on hair colors and different hair and stuff like that. So first I'm going to come and okay. just try to catch the shape of her head and brush stroke across it from the upper right down and this is going to start talking about the direction the hair is blowing because she's long, blowy hair. So we got to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to just stroke out long little tendrils of hair. Like you do. Come down here. I just think it's fun to have hair. And it's just about this first layer. A lot of my canvas, you'll notice, is still, it's still showing, showing through. through. Yeah. And that's okay. It is super okay. Because there's so many layers here, I don't really have to worry about that. What I can do now is talk a little bit about the different folds of my skirt using my number four. Because I can come here and I can brush down some more shadow here. Right, brushing it down, make it a little darker, and that way it can create the pink highlights that I'm looking to make. And the trick is just, see, I'm always just trying to keep the flow of my skirt. Now I'm going to get in here, I'm going to get a little of my pink and a little white. Pink and white. And I'm going to come here. And that's where I'm going to start talking about with this part of the skirt that's blowing back. This part of the skirt that's blowing back, it's all a mix of the purple and the pink. Mm. You can come back and give it some deep values. But you want a nice mix of the purple and the pink, right? Just barely 
have enough quinacridone, but I'm going to eke it out, man. Look at me working it. Work that last smidge of pigment. <laughs> See, we're just blowing that back. Just creating tones of value between those two spaces. Because what you want is for it to feel like there's some layering there. Now rinsing this out, let's finish out our blonde. Mm. So I've got just enough yellow left to get through. I'm going to add a little of my cad yellow to my but yellow you, ochre. You have a whole tube of it right there. I can I know, see I'm it. Just, I'm just I'm beckoning. Just, I Paint know, with me, Sherpa. Look at me, like I'm going to get my skin off and I'm going to go get a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making a little bit slightly lighter color. Where are you going now? And I'm going to come up to her hair and I'm oh. going to start stroking in the shape and layers of her hair. And you can see why I wasn't that concerned about the first layer. Just stroking that down. You can go in front of Winnie if you need to. And a little more white. So a very light highlight. Yeah. All right. I have to put out more white. <laughs> Gosh darn it. I thought I was out. Maybe my fluid's still good. Okay. I'm being weird. I admit it. I've just got to take her hair up another lightness. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get my brush with some yellow. It doesn't take that much. And adding this little story. That's the third layer. And you can see I'm just blowing the hair, following my previous lines, creating highlights over some of it. And that's how we create that little hair story. That's her little blowy, billowy hair. Guess what we get to do after this? Cannot believe we're there, really? but we are. We're already at the signing part? We are. And so wow. I'm going to sign. We're going to recap. You're going to do that thing I told you to do for the full screen? Yeah, yeah, I've got it ready. Okay. We gave him a little bit in the beginning, too. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to sign my um, signature kind of in an interesting, diminutive place. Um, I think signatures are part of the composi composition. So I just like to think about where I'm putting them so that they don't detract from what I'm signing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to do all this work on a painting and then drop something hideous on there. Now, while I know this is all... It undermines all your hard work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I know that this has all just been a bit of hocus pocus, but thank you guys. Thank you for coming and playing with us today. <sighs> you guys are the best. That you have participated in the 13 Days of Halloween is a super lot of fun. It, I'm not saying I would remotely do 31 days next year, but I'm saying if I was going to consider it is because how awesome you guys are and the way you guys showed up. And never say never because it could happen. Yeah. Right now it's 13. <laughs> no. Now, I recap. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, recap. So the first thing that we did is we made a Payne's Gray using Thalo Blue and Mars Black and Titanium White. And we created a gradated sky around a moon we traced with a plate. I used a fluid paint and my specialty star brush to splatter, but I reminded you that I have a video on different ways to splatter paint. So I highly recommend the splatter brush, but you know, there's a lot of ways to splatter, like thousands. So I, I think there's only like three in that video, so go check that out. Um, and then I painted the moon with a yellow ochre in black, and I showed you how to kind of crater it up. Then we painted... Winnie and we did first the brown on the hair and then a dark green and then we went back with the highlights of green and yellow and some purple and the cad red and yellow and some curls on the hair using our round and we talked about letting the brush do that. Then we put in Mary and Mary was like a really fun mix of one of my favorite colors was the quinacridone magenta and the cad red and we used all of those color mixes to build up her red and orange dress and we talked about creating highlights to show where things were. 
or outlining to show shape and structure. And we did some swirling, fun, wiggly bits with her hair. And she was layered over her sister. We hadn't even put in her yet because she's the last layer. When we went to put in Sarah, we did a nice mix of Quinn and white to get the bright pinks. And then where it was here, we just waited to, to put this edge in so we got all nice and loose here and then put this edge in to keep it cleaned up. We swirled some of the skirt back with pink and white and purple. We had a nice purple bodice. And I showed you guys how to use the moon color, yellow ochre, cad yellow, and some white to create some wispily blowing hair. And then we signed it and talked about thinking about our signature. And that's what we did today. And, I'm, and you know what we're doing tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to show them here, too. we got to show them. Okay. So there's, this is what I think you guys were asking for, and you're like, can I do that? I think this is so you guys can screen capture if you need to blow it up big to see it to, to, to. anyways, that's where that is. <laughs> and John did that for you at the beginning. We're going to do that more because we know you guys need that. Um, if you need the traceable, it's the website, 13 Days of Halloween, plus everything we've ever painted on Halloween is there. Yeah. yeah. I want to see you guys tomorrow for the pumpkin carving. Now, listen, if you come tomorrow, there's going to be a way to win the pumpkin carving tools that I'm using um, three of you will get to win a set, and I have to tell you, they're kind of bombastic. Like, I wouldn't use them unless they were good, and they are good. Yeah. And I'm going to show you guys some stuff on how to carve a pumpkin. Follow my social media for crazy pumpkin awesome. If you're making slime, be sure to get your contact solution or your liquid starch. I do recommend contact solution for allergies, but because it's going to be crazy. Yes. I'm, I'm going to make you, like, the hero of your little brush's life. <laughs> or their tormentor, depending on how they feel about texture. <laughs> All right. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. I cannot wait to see every painting that you do. And I see you at the easel tomorrow. Bye-bye.